So my talk will be on ophthalmic viscoelastic device. So as introductions, it's actually the common viscoelastic, viscoelastic solution we use in our ocular surgery, either to coat or to protect our intraocular tissue. Okay, and it was, it was first used in ophthalmic surgery in 1972, right? So the indications will be in cataract surgeries, uh, corneal surgeries, and PK, glaucoma surgeries, uh, especially the glaucoma filtering surgeries, the, our anterior segment rec reconstructions, and also the posterior, posterior segment surgeries as in vitro retinal surgery. Yeah? All right, so let's uh, move on to decompositions. Um, it contains sodium hyaluronate, which is a biopolymer in connective tissue. Uh, which is also uh, uh, present in uh, present in aqueous and vitreous. Uh, it also has chondroitin sulfate, which is a major polysaccharide in cornea, uh, and also hydro hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, which is a component of a plant fibers. Okay, okay, right. It has a what we call rheological properties. Consists of viscosity, viscoelasticity, pseudoplasticity, and also surface tension. So it is the ability of uh, viscoelasticity is actually the ability of the solution to return to its original shape after it's being stressed. Okay, so it's actually increased with the increase of molecular weight and the greater chain of molecules. And this allow the AC to be reformed after we decompress the cornea. Let's say after we, we do the wound con uh, construction, after uh, an AK wound construction, right? Then the viscosity. This is actually the solution resistance to flow, all right? So uh, it actually measures in, the, in re re relation to shear force and it is measured in centipoise or centistokes, all right? So for ideal uh, OVD, it should have a low viscosity at shear, high shear rates. When we inject the uh, OVD into the AC, because we are only using a 21 gauge uh, Rycroft, all right? High viscosity at low shear rate, which is during our CCC, and also moderate viscosity at medium shear rate during the IOL implantation because this is uh, actually a bigger cannula, right? Then the pseudoplasticity. And this is actually the ability of the solutions of the OVD to transform under pressure from gel to a more liquid substance, all right? So it should be a low viscosity at highest shear rate. So it can actually be easily injected through a very small cannula like Rycroft, like 21 gauge Rycroft, yeah? And it should be high viscosity at rest. So it helps to maintain the AC, especially uh, during CCC and also when we want to inject in our IOL, right? And as the pressure increase, the OVD should become more elastic and perform as shock absorbing gel. Then the surface uh, surface tension. All right, this is the it's very easy. It's the coating ability of an OVD. So it's actually determined by uh, the contact tissue. It's actually uh, determined by the surface tension of the OVD of contact tissue, uh, surgical instrument, and the IOL as well. So if you notice, if you put on um, Kilon GV. Right, on, onto a cornea, then you will see it's just like a blob of gel. But when you apply, um, let's say something which is more dispersive like HPMC, like um, Aurovis, you can see that it actually coats the epithelium, coats the cornea. Okay, this is the because of uh, where the more dispersive it is, the surface tension is is lower, all right? Then we have the classification of OVD, all right? We have cohesive, which is a long molecular chain, high molecular weight, and it has high de degree of pseudoplasticity and also high surface tension. That's why it forms like a blob or just a gel on the surface, all right? But 
the it has the ability to pressurize the eye and create space. So it's ideal during capsulorhexis and opening up the bag before we put in the IOL. All right, and the removal is very easy. All right, you can see this when when during a uh, uh, visco removal during phaco emulsification, you can see all the OVD actually comes into the uh, IA probe. Then dispersive. For dispersive, it has lower viscosity, lower molecular weight, lower surface tension. That's why it coats the surface and lower pseudoplasticity. So because of these uh, properties, it actually coats the endothelium during fluidics. So it actually protects the endothelium during our FACO, during the heat. Uh, uh, I mean, protects uh, the, the endothelium from the heat of FACO. Okay, that's why this is actually ideal to use in combination with cohesive OVD for soft shell technique and lubrication of the injector cartridge of uh, during the IOL insertion. Okay, for example, we have uh, endo code, we have this code, all right, and oki code. And we, now we have a lot of combination OVD in a single. Uh, strange, they combine the cohesive and dispersive. Okay, you can see um, now we have this COVIS or MVs. Um, what is the, the, the one yang banyak tu? Okay. The purple one. The one we always use. Get the name. Okay, but it is actually a single agent with cohesive and dispersive properties. All right. So, it, so the, the usually um, the, it has like probably like one mil of uh, cohesive and one mil of dispersive. So the front cohesive is used for uh, CCC and then the dispersive is, is used during the IOL insertion, okay? Then we have what we call visco-adaptive, okay? This is a pseudo-dispersive, ultra-viscous cohesive, okay? It is actually the substance, it's OVD that can change its behavior at a different flow rate. At lower flow rate, it becomes more viscous and more cohesive. And at higher flow rate, it becomes like a pseudo dispersive and thus it protects the endothelium. For example, it's a Helon 5 Pro. Right, so this photo shows a full spectrum of OVD, the function. So when, when you can see the combination is actually in between, right? So, uh, for an ideal OVD, so we need that OVD depends on the steps of surgery, right? Uh, cohesive, uh, when, because it plat flattened the capsule, it's actually suitable during uh, capsulorhexis, uh, uh, capsulotomy, yeah? then it actually open up the IUL bag for easy insertion of IUL and it's easily removed. For dispersive, uh, the function is uh, to protect the endothelium and if let's say you have a PC rein and you, knew, you want the, to tamponate the vitreous, you use dispersive uh, OVD yeah? and also for lubrication of the IUL cartridge. It should be non toxic. It should be clear of clear of course, and is the ease of infusion. Okay. And what's more, and now we have a combination of OVD with the anesthetic agent. Uh, I think this is new. It's called Vestesia. It's with the lidocaine two percent, uh, non preserved uh, lidocaine, right? Which is very good because it actually be besides providing the all the the properties of OVD, it also provides anesthesia. All right, complications. If, we re if the, the removal of OVD is incomplete, then we will expect elevation of IOP because of the large uh, molecule of OVD will cause mechanical resistance to the trabecular network. And this will actually reduce outflow facility, okay? Um, usually for the lower viscosities and lower molecular weight OVDs, the, the, this is actually 
quite less, much less. And also it can actually resolve in about 24 to 72 hours. All right. Uh, the other rare complications like uh, band keratopathy. All right, this is because of the chondroitin sulfate uh, containing OVDs and also what we call a capsular distension syndrome. Okay, it's actually when it actually entrapped behind the IOL as a uh, uh, AC, that's right, AC at here today, and there is a space of IOL for the 360, uh, 360 degrees. Okay, all right. And, it, and when it denatures, the IOL is forced and pressurized the capsule. All right, and then the capsule will be distended posteriorly. And a patient will have some uh, disturbance in uh, visual equity. And we can actually see the large space between the IUL and the posterior capsule. I've uh, never seen this, uh, but it's uh, reported before, all right? All right, I think that's all, thank you.